their revenge tour this season and close with a 10th victory. And the Stanford Cardinal on senior night trying to protect home turf while their Pac-12 fate is decided up the road in Seattle. And welcome, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet. Hope you've enjoyed your Thanksgiving weekend. Kirk, the selection committee gets to work eight days from Selection Sunday. More proof of the, the beauty of college football is on the plains of Auburn. <laughs> number one, Alabama goes down. An emphatic win for Auburn. Ohio State, despite the loss of JT Barrett, wins in Ann Arbor. Wisconsin, a big statement shutout, and Oklahoma takes care of business. This is what makes college football so exciting. Great rivalry weekend, really. Throwing the Miami loss, it's not up here on the board. The committee will have their work cut out for them. What do they do along with just Alabama, who's been undefeated all year? How far do they slide them down? Are they still in the top five? Be fun to see. Clemson, by the way, on the road against South Carolina tonight. We'll keep you posted on that one. Stanford, meanwhile, will win the Pac-12 North if Washington wins at home against Washington State. Bryce Love is going to play tonight. His ankle is okay. Watched him practice, Kirk. Remarkable how this guy has fought through a high ankle sprain for six weeks and been a monster on the field. Yeah, top back in the country, in my opinion, with how he can do so many different things for this offense. And what makes his season incredible is what you just said. He's been fighting through a high ankle sprain for half the season. This might be one of the best individual performances of the year. 166 yards against a very physical Washington team while battling through that ankle injury. It's been one of those things that's just touch and go. He'll come out tonight. He'll give it a go. You might see him go out for a series or two if it gets tweaked. One thing we know that I think Stanford has got to do a good job of trying to take some of the pressure off of their running game. You know they're about being physical. They've got to take some shots downfield with their, their quarterback Costello with their big physical receivers. Now, some say that Love has fallen away in the Heisman race, but a big game tonight... Yeah, you yeah. never know. Yeah. Josh Adams is another huge home run running back for Notre Dame, but can they get back to the, the physical running game? It hasn't really been there the last couple weeks for them. Well, two weeks ago, you and I and our crew were in Miami and watched them on the road. They really struggled. Went back home and got it together a little bit better against Navy, but it's, it's an offense on the left side. They've got to really establish that line of scrimmage, and they pride themselves on that. It'll be a good challenge tonight against Stanford, and then I think that by doing that, you can see you affect the defensive back size. They start to look into that backfield and that's where Brandon Winbush can make big plays throwing the ball downfield it's probably the most accurate throw that he makes is throwing it downfield Stanford's going to put everybody at the line of scrimmage because they respect their ability to run the football Brandon Wimbush is going to have to make plays throwing the football tonight I think for Notre Dame to go on the road and win not the loudest plays for visitors but it's been hard for Notre Dame to win here Stanford's won six of the last eight overall and the last five at home against Notre Dame David Shaw standing by with Maria Taylor hi Maria Hi, Chris. Well, Coach, over in Washington, your Pac-12 championship game fate is being decided. But here at Senior Night, it's the last game of the regular season on the farm. How have you described the importance of this game to your team? Well, for the old guys especially, last time on this field, um, they put so much into this program, so much effort, and, and fighting through so many things to achieve what they've achieved, all these wins over these years and bowl victories, etc. It'd be great to go out with a bang. Speaking of fighting through something, Bryce Love fighting through an ankle injury the last six weeks. What did you see from him in warm-up that lets you know he's ready to go tonight? He's got to be the toughest kid in America. I mean, it's, it's painful, but he's functional, and we'll see what he can do today. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, Maria. Meanwhile, Brian Kelly talking about a chance for a do-over on a national stage after the flop at Miami. A chance to write the season's final chapter here and beat another team that beat them last year. This would make it five for five on the revenge tour for the Irish if they can get it done on the road tonight. But it's been very tough for them to win in this place in recent decades. 
Stanford won the toss and they said we will take the football. So we'll see that man Bryce Love and the Cardinal offense very soon. KJ Costello the sophomore quarterback and very talented thrower will be on display. That's Cameron Scarlett fine running back to back up to Love back deep to receive the kickoff from Jonathan Dorr. Low boot and it's driven into the end zone and Scarlett will leave it right there. Well, we'll keep a close eye on Bryce Love. Kirk, many would say with a chance that you might play Friday against USC for a Pac-12 title, why would you even risk playing Love tonight? But he is a competitive dude and I was he's feeling good enough. Yeah, I, I don't think a player in this program really looks at life like that. It makes sense to think about, hey, you potentially have the Pac-12 championship. Why not give him another chance, another week potentially to rest? But the, the DNA of a guy like Bryce Love, the reason he is in a position that he's in is one of the top backs in the country because it's, in his mind, a no-brainer. Costello in the shotgun. They fake it to Love. Costello from the pocket slips it across the middle, and it's a completion for nine yards to J.J. Arcega Whiteside, the physical junior wide receiver, his top target. Costello's a guy that came from Carson Palmer's high school down there in Orange County and broke his records. Talented thrower of the football. Yeah, he's got a, a great arm and already a little change. Ryan Burns checks into the game. Second play of the game, Costello out. Burns, a senior who started against the Irish a year ago. He's used as kind of a situational quarterback. Very good runner, but perhaps a nod on senior night to give him a, a bigger role. You need just about a foot for the first down. Stanford puts a lot on their quarterbacks at the line of scrimmage, getting them into the right play. Love takes the pitch, cuts it back, and Sutter steps. And gets out across the 45. Ryan Burns, the quarterback there, threw a nice little block, Kirk. Yeah, that, that's a design play to be able to see the quarterback get around the edge. Watch the quarterback pitch, and then he's going to lead around. This is not the, the running back deciding to bring this back. That's a, just a design counter with Burns with a pretty good block. The reason he checked into the game is to be able to put that linebacker on his butt. That was a heck of a block. 6'5", 230, so he's an effective blocker. Love again, running right, had a little crease. He was just tripped up there by Niles Morgan to prevent a, a big game. Chick-fil-A impact players tonight, Kirk. Uh, it is about Bryce Love and being able to establish the running game. We already saw a little bit of J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, what he can do, big physical target. Jerry Tiller, he's got a hold up in the inside, and Tavon Coney and those linebackers have to be incredibly active and have to do a good job of getting off the blocks of these Stanford linemen as they climb to that second level. Love out of the game now, replaced by Cameron Scarlett, a junior from Portland. He's a short yardage goal line kind of back, tough runner. Irish bring pressure. And hit as he throws, the ball rolling free. They have not signaled incomplete. Now they finally do. Niles Morgan came on the blitz against Costello. How about Mike Elko saying not only that, he's going to bring both his linebackers and even sneaks his safety up, bringing a lot of pressure up the middle. And there's just not enough guys there to be able to pick him up. And it was Morgan that eventually got by the back, Scarlett. But he brought the house there and timed that up perfectly to set up this third down. The arm was going forward, so... It's third and six. And now it's Trevor Spates, the sophomore from Texas, in the backfield to the left of the quarterback. They come again. Again, they pick up the pressure this time. Jump ball. We'll see a lot of those on the edge. They try to get it to Colby Parkinson, the big 6-7 tight end against Julian Love. It's fourth down. Yeah, and, that, that, and that's all they're trying to do. They're, they're not hiding it. He's 6-7. He's up against a corner who's undersized. And to tight end flexed out, they just try to put it up high in the air. But a good job by Notre Dame's defense kind of settling into this game and forcing Stanford here on this opening drive to punt the football. Jake Bailey, the junior, having a terrific season as a punter. Chris Fink is the Irish return man standing inside his 10. <laughs> Just got to get out of the way of Trombetti. Bailey, a long punt, booming one, and pushing Fink all the way back inside the 15-yard line. So the Irish force a punt, and we'll see the first possession for Wimbush and Adams and company coming up. Coming out with a three-wide receiver look up to the top. We'll see if they start to try to throw the ball a little bit more here. Dexter Williams, number two, is the back. He's got it. And he's a guy that's been bothered from 
all really all season long. Now he's healthy, but when he's good to go, almost nine yards a carry for him. Yeah, that, when Dexter Williams and Tony Jones both are healthy, I would argue they're as talented, maybe even more complete backs than Josh Adams, who's a very physical back. They're loaded in that backfield when they're healthy. Wimbush delivers a low ball in the traffic over there. He's just not just continues to struggle. Yeah. Another run pass option. He feels that he's got soft coverage, so he aborts the running game. And he tries to get the ball thrown out there. I'm telling you, I've seen this guy throw when he's just been away from being out here and throwing a through with him at George Whitfield in San Diego. And the nose of the ball is down. The ball is going down. It's in his head as much as it's in its mechanics as much as anything for him right now. It's a lot for a quarterback to fight through mentally than if he's thinking right about the, the simplest things. In the middle of the season, it sure is. That's why they try to give him simple throws to get him going. Needs seven on third down. He's got lots of time to survey the field and delivers a strike across the middle. Off and running is Jefferson, fastest receiver on the team. They're not going to catch him. Begins celebrating at the 25. Touchdown, Irish. A lightning strike of 83 yards. Eric Cotton, defensive end for the Cardinal down. They chose not to pressure, but they paid a big price, Kirk. Yeah, he had all day back there, but the bunch formation gave Stanford some problems. Chris Stepherson is out here to the outside, and he's against these two defensive backs. He's going to work to the inside, and when he works to the inside, that's a, that's a linebacker trying to stay with him in Palma. Now look at the job of improvising. He comes off of that, and he's got a safety in Justin Reed trying to stay with him in man-to-man. -man. You're talking, look, see how he works to the inside? That's a linebacker trying to stay with him. Two Stanford players run into each other, and then Stepherson with that speed made eye contact with Brandon Wimbush, and give Wimbush, we just talked about his mechanics, give him credit for sitting in that pocket, waiting, waiting, and then putting it right on the numbers to the fleet-footed Kevin Stefferson. Cotton appears to really need help to get to the sidelines, and that is a serious problem because they're not that deep at the defensive line, Stanford. Justin Yoon with the conversion of the Irish after a quiet start, come up with their longest pass play of the season to take the lead. Just the Irish's longest pass play of the season, but the longest play that the Stanford defense has allowed this year. Door, so he booted away again, and kicking to that left corner to Scarlet, and will take it at the one. Follows the wedge out and runs hard out to the 28-yard line. Costello trying to get himself going, delivers the throw to Connor Weddington, and the receiver who missed last week with a concussion, able to pick up about three. Watch the quarterback here, and this is something that David Shaw has been doing since Andrew Luck was here. They put a lot on the quarterback. When they evaluate a quarterback, it's not just about how big and tall and athletic and how big and strong his arm is. It's how much he can handle at the line of scrimmage. And it's they don't look over for cards. It's on the quarterback to make the checks. It's as complex as any system for quarterback, isn't it? He got here. He said he took him six months to learn it on paper. But that didn't translate to the field, where it happens a lot faster. <laughs> Costello rolling out, has some space, sets his feet, and fires into traffic, and the catch is made beautifully by our Sega Whiteside. He just went up and over the safety, Nick Coleman. He also did a good job of just improvising. He's on the left side, rolling to the right with the quarterback. Watch him in the background. He kind of looks around, looks for the soft spot, and then he really never really found the soft spot. He wasn't able to pull away from Nick Coleman. And this is the beauty of being 6'3". This is the concern that Notre Dame had. The physicality and the size of these Notre or these Stanford wide receivers and the tight ends. That time he makes a great play in traffic. Showed great hand strength besides that, that big body. 21 yards on the play. First play from Notre Dame territory. They pick up the blitz. Cassetto delivers on a slant. And catch is made in traffic driven back after about a seven-yard gain. I'd love to see the communication, the chess match between Costello and, and the linebackers. You're, you're going to see Niles Morgan and and these linebackers, they're in, 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 in one hand, you'll have the quarterback, Costello, looking and trying to see the front and the coverage, and he's making checks, trying to get into the right play. And you'll, you'll, then you'll see Notre Dame trying to make checks, too. But this is all being done on the field. 
Trent Urban stretches the streak to 26 consecutive games with a catch. This is what you're talking about right there. And Love has to make an immediate cut because darting through was Coney again. Well, if you can't climb to that second level, he's out here, but it's because of the play up front by the defensive lineman. I mean, that's a clean path to a very athletic linebacker in Coney, and that's how you take Bryce Love's ability to make plays away. You've got to do a good job. The defensive linemen, if they keep playing like that, this defense, the D linemen really deserve a lot of the credit. Coney makes the tackle, but the D linemen take the linemen away. Three straight negative rush carries for Love, and now in third and six, Costello delivers downfield into heavy traffic. Here's a flag. They interfere with our Sega White side. It was Sean Crawford, a corner who's been pressed into duty in the secondary. Pass interference. Defense number 20. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Ball is underthrown and thrown behind the receiver. Watch, watch him work to the post corner. Ball should be thrown to the further to our left. Instead, it's behind him. And how often do we see Dave Kataya, who's up here every week with his balls that are underthrown? ultimately impacting the defensive backs and you see pass interference calls happens every week first right. penalty of the night moves the ball inside the 30-yard line final minute of the first quarter Spates in the I formation they fake it to him and Costello steps up delivers for the end zone Irwin jump ball touchdown Stanford answers Notre Dame touchdown are getting going. That yeah. was a pretty throw by Costello. Well, you, you knew that they were going to have to start throwing. Conservative early and then opening it up here and it gives you an idea what Costello can do with his arm too. Irwin runs lots of short patterns. He's known for the slants, the tough catches. This is his second touchdown this season. He has started one for four, but four for four on that drive for 59 yards and a touch off the edge. The Irish pressured the PAT, but Jet Toner, the Hawaiian, able to knock it through. Well, first of all, you see a, line, a safety coming here on a blitz, picked up nicely, and then the, the ball is thrown downfield. The safety's taken away completely by the tight end. See the tight end, Dalton Schultz? He takes the safety to the middle of the field and opens up that kind of that that uh, that area where he was actually located. He puts it up where only his receiver can go up. Trent Irwin, the really nice catch, but well designed there by Mike Bloomgren to take that middle safety with the tight end, take him away and open up the middle of that field. A nice throw by Costello. Bailey, the punter, is the kickoff man for Stanford. C.J. Sanders standing at his goal line. It's a big day in the Sanders family, right? His dad, an Ohio State grad. His mom was a basketball player at Michigan, so yeah. an intense one in the household yeah, that's today. That's right. And now play action. Winbush rolling out in first down. Pump fake. Didn't want to take the loss, so why is he just throws it into the bench? Okirike was in his face. I, know, I thought Okirike might get to him before he got the ball out of his hands, but Wimbush at the very last second wisely gets rid of the football. I think he thought he might be able to use that pump fake to get around him, but Okirike is a great, great athletic inside linebacker in his defense. Quiet start for Josh Adams. Five carries for seven yards. This is carry number six. Tries the right side, but it's going to be tough against that group in Cardinal tonight. End of the first quarter in Palo Alto. Seven apiece on the farm. Back after this message and a word for your local ABC station. This battle for the Legends Trophy. Seven, seven here. Good news so far for Sanford fans. The road in Seattle. The Huskies a 7 0 lead over the Cougars in the Apple Cup. The Washington win would give Stanford a division title in the Pac 12 North and a three way top. And be back to work Friday against USC. Wimbush. Brief look downfield. Now pinballing in the backfield. Stays alive. Chased. Chased. Can't pull the trigger. It'll be sacked.
back at the 20. Mike Tyler and Mustafa Branch, two reserve linebackers, clean them up. Oh, we talked about third down, not letting him out of the pocket, keeping him in the pocket right here. You've got to do a good job of not letting him step up. And you can see they take away any lane at all. And now you're trying to get to the outside, not let him get to the outside, outflank you. That's great defense, great team defense, well executed there by Stanford on third down. 26th sack of the season for the Cardinal defense. Newsom boots it. And Irwin had the touchdown catch. Tries to get the corner, but he's not the speediest punt returner. We mentioned that. He is knocked down at the 42 yard line by Esmar Bilal. Seven apiece, Cardinal offense back on the field. Could have the one gain early and is going to be hammered. You can hear the pads pop. Stepping in to deliver the shot there was Trombetti and Niles Morgan from his middle linebacker position. Yeah, and at Notre Dame again, first and ten. They, they are bringing people up to the line of scrimmage. And K.J. Costello, well, he's going to have to continue to make plays with his arm, which I'm sure he welcomes the opportunity to do. He's made that last drive. Last time they had the ball, he welcomed that opportunity, made some big plays. And he's actually here early in this game, 5 of 8, 67 yards. Now watch, here he goes there, back to the line of scrimmage. In total control. Give him a lot of room to be able to evaluate the defense and, and get into the right call. He's not looking to the sideline at all. Four-man rush steps up, delivers over the middle, and the catch is made down at the 35-yard line. One of the big targets there is Caden Smith, his roommate, the tight end. And Caden Smith working from the left over right behind the linebacker. That ball has to be thrown on a line to get that between the linebacker, Coney, over his hands and between the safeties. It's a tough throw to make, and you got to throw it on time. And as I said, you got to throw it on a line. Gives you an idea what kind of arm strength Costello has. Smith getting a chance injuries to Dalton Schultz opened the door and he made a touchdown grab in Cal in the rivalry game a week ago 20 yards there and now Spates lowers his shoulder physical run he just went right up and over Jalen Elliott Maria well Chris you heard Kirk talking about KJ Costello being in complete control at the line of scrimmage that's the reason why he came to Stanford he said he wanted to learn how to play like Tom Brady arrive into the game and have two or three plays and have to get his team into the correct look based on coverages and fronts. And he also said that his speed of operation is finally picking up now that he's been a starter for a few games. So now when he sees 12 seconds on the clock, he's comfortable with making the call. It's good stuff, Maria. He tried to be ready in his first year, but not even Andrew Luck could start his first year in this offense. And he said, if he can't do it, nobody can. <laughs> So he redshirted a year ago. On play action, Costello delivers into the scene. Catch made. Smith hurdles down inside the five. Back-to-back -back catches from the sophomore from Texas. Just works from the right. He's right here. He's going to work around, kind of get between these safeties. Just kind of works, lets the two receivers ahead of him take the defenders with them. It opened up a nice vacancy there in the zone right behind them. And Hey, there's again nice throw by Costello who just looks like he's in a rhythm these last couple drives for Stanford looks very confident right now some programs can't find a tight end Stanford is loaded with him seems like the top recruit in the country every class comes here if he doesn't go to Notre Dame first and goal love is in the game Costello looking to throw the fade jump ball Arcega right side didn't come down with it it was a battle there with Julian love they will always, whether it's down inside the red zone or short yardage, they're going to go up to their bigger receivers and tight ends. And he intentionally throws it up in the air to give those big receivers a chance to make a play. And our Sega white side is at 6-3. The progressive pylon can give you an idea that it, he holds on to that ball. It looks like he may have kept that foot down for a chance for a touchdown. The sixth offensive lineman, Nick Wilson, in there behind the big fullback. Love lines up. Kobe Parkinson at 6-7 down at the bottom of your screen, one-on-one. -on -one. Sega white side to the right. It's Love out of the eye formation. Costello hit as he throws, just lobs it up. There's a flag down. Catch is made in the end zone for a touchdown by Sega white side. Let's check the marker. Notre Dame may have jumped there. Like Jay Hayes, 93. So Costello making good use of the free play. Offside defense in the neutral zone at the snap, number 93. The penalties decline. 
the result of the play, touchdown. You know it's coming, but it is hard to stop these physical dudes. Yeah, and, and they took away, they took put a safety over top with a big tight end, so he goes back, just like we saw before the break, goes back to Arsenio Whiteside, who still is a big target at 6-3, just brings it back, intentionally throws it where he'll come back to the ball, and tough to adjust here for Julian Love, who's a much smaller 5'11", at least listed at 5'11". Sega Whiteside with his 11th career touchdown, sixth this season. Costello has got to go in the ground game. Bryce hasn't been the story. The quarterback's arm has sent Stanford in front 14-7 for the first time tonight. Stanford on top after a 55-yard touchdown drive. Costello to our Sega Whiteside. Up the road in Seattle. Huskies lead the Cougars 14 at nothing now. A win that would put Stanford in the conference championship game on Friday. Sanders from the one is hard and driven back. Good coverage by the Cardinal special teams. Top him at the 13. <laughs> Late arriving crowd, but trying to make themselves felt now. Adams is the back. Ambush from the pocket. Again, plenty of time against a three-man rush. Great coverage. No, what a throw. Now finally throws across the middle, and that's an equimenius St. Brown, a late break. It's enough to move the sticks. What, what, what's really great here is the offensive lineman not going downfield. He's back there forever. And none of those linemen work downfield, and St. Brown does a heck of a job Playing of the tempo working here. back. Adams, uh, a first down run as they got, they got Stanford's defense flat-footed. They got a little tempo there right after the first down. Back, okay, we talked about being backed up in their own territory. Adams, seven yards. That's something to celebrate so far tonight. <laughs> he plows on the right side. You can see the strength that he has pulls the tackler across the 35 for another first down. Could not be any more of a different set of traits than what you see from Bryce Love. I mean, he, he is big at 6'1", 225 pounds. And he, he has more speed than you realize, but he needs to be able to go into that second level running downhill. We fake it to him. Wimbush wanted to take a shot downfield and lofts it to St. Brown. High one-handed grab. Now they say incomplete. Couldn't quite get it. Should have been a completion there, though. You saw the ref saying bobbling, and that's what it was. He got his foot down, but watch the ball. Never had possession. The ball is bobbled as he goes out of bounds. He got the foot down, but he forgot to secure that football. He was running free for a long time before the quarterback yeah. got the ball there. I think he just put a little bit too much air on that. He could have just thrown a little bit more, just a little bit more zip. And St. Brown broke clear. It's good to see him playing, by the way. There was talk about possibility of St. Brown maybe not being able to play after last week. Oh, but unbelievable great. fall on yeah. his head. It looks great. Went through the concussion protocol, got cleared to play. Dexter Williams, a lateral, makes a cut. Not much running room, just across the 40. That, 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 I don't know if <laughs> that almost looked like a little drill you do in pregame warm-up. Watch Wimbush. He just kind of floats it out there. He's relying ri on some speed for Williams. That little ball fake to air and then flips it out to Williams. It's pretty nifty. A lot, lot quicker than what you'd see from Josh Adams. He's got to work on that left-handed pitch. For that. that was an inaccurate pitch, which put Williams in a tough position. <laughs> Irish needs six to keep this drive alive. Adams back in the game. Again, a four-man rush, and they flip it off completely. They don't get Wimbush under pressure. He's now making some throws. That's Stefferson, who had the big touchdown earlier. A good route there by Stefferson, who's showing some really, he loses his shoe, but showing some really good route discipline here in this football game. On third down, a little move to the inside, held the defender, then back out, and nobody went with him. 13-yard gain on third down. Now one more swinging it again on the first down, and St. Brown makes use of a cushion, gets about seven. A little bit more balance and a little bit more urgency from Notre Dame. Started this drive back inside their own territory. Right at their 10-yard line. Converted a few third downs and a little bit more tempo and, as he said, a little bit more in attack mode. And Stefferson, who came in motion, they flipped back to Williams on the left. And he is going to be trapped and dropped back near the original line of scrimmage by Jovan Swan. Third down and 10 now. 
Again, said it earlier, but it's good to see Dexter Williams and Tony Jones both healthy and giving them just a kind of a change of pace from Josh Adams. And Wimbush is rolling out and looking to the end zone. High throw over the head of Stefferson. Defended by Murphy and Antoine, it's fourth down. But didn't it look like Harrison Phillips jumped the nose guard? I thought he moved. I, I thought there I, was going to be a flag. Yeah. I thought it was a free flag. Maybe, maybe he wasn't quite off sides, but no call on the field. I, he definitely moved right over, right over the, the center, right there. I guess the judgment was he wasn't in the neutral zone. He's known for being able to anticipate and dissect plays very quickly. Justin Yunes had a good year, 10 of 14. This from 38 yards to cut into the lead. And the junior from Nashville drives it through, 14-10. To he expects a close, competitive game when these two teams collide. The last five decided by a touchdown or less in a four-point game at the break. Irish will get the football to begin the second half. End of 30 here on Senior at Palo Alto. Stay tuned for the Capital One Halftime Report right after these messages. And welcome back. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, and Maria Taylor. But you got two home run hitting tailbacks, two offenses that love to smash you with the run. And instead, Kirk, we got three touchdown passes in the first half. Yeah, and I, and I think how these teams adjust will be big because Brandon Wimbush has been the best runner up to this point for Notre Dame. That, that plus one that's sometimes difficult to deal with. And Stanford only 49 yards rushing. And I think Notre Dame has done a very good job of trying to take that part of what away from the Stanford offense and put more on KJ Costello in that passing attack. Weiss Love limited to 31 yards on his 10 carries. CJ Sanders back at the goal line. Bailey booming punt. Booming uh, pickoff. He had a bunch of booming punts. He really shaped the field position in the first half. Check with Maria. Well, Chris, right now for David Shaw and Stanford, the biggest concerns he has on defense is tackling. He's concerned with the way that Notre Dame's a little bit slippery, and he doesn't think that they're finishing tackles, and he also wants to convert more on third down offensively. Now, we did talk a little bit about Bryce Love, and he said he can still cut, but they're going to rely on a heavy rotation at running back in order to try and keep his legs fresh. Also, you saw that Eric Cotton clearly out for the rest of the game, and also Joey Alfieri. He is most likely out, but Coach said he hasn't gotten the final word on that. We saw him going into the locker room holding his arm earlier today. Thanks, Maria. There's some backups in there for the Cardinal defense as the Irish begin from the 25. Adams is in the game. Josh with 27 yards and his 12 carries in the first half. First down throw. Wimbush across the middle. St. Brown had lots of space. St. Brown still going down the sidelines. Tight open all the way to the end zone. The second lightning strike for this Notre Dame passing game tonight, and they claim the lead. How about that? The Irish saw it showing some breakaway speed in their passing attack, both their touchdown passes, short throws, and long runs after the catch. This time by St. Brown. Yeah, and Jordan Perez, the linebacker, was no match for the speed of St. Brown. The folks were off in the concession stands at halftime and had to settle back in. They, they missed something. Well, Chris, I think it's a mix-up in coverage. First and 10 pass may have surprised them. St. Brown's here will work his way across. Perez is here, but what I want you to watch is the left side of the coverage. Look at the left side right here and here. They're playing man, and they're going to be cleared out. St. Brown's going to work across, and there's nobody left out in that left flat. Completely unoccupied. And now you have a foot race between a linebacker and a very fleet-footed wide receiver. Again, left side is completely gone because they were in man. He's got all this room to work with. He's got great open field speed and a great effort there. Good ta uh, good blocking downfield by Kevin Stefferson, who scored the first touchdown. And Brandon Wimbush says, this isn't bad. Throw a ball about 10 yards and let him do the rest. I like that analysis. The dangers of man coverage. Those DBs running with their backs to the play. That's right. That is not what you want to see as an inside linebacker chasing down a wide receiver. So 12 seconds into the second half, the Irish have a three-point lead.
Scarlett right from the goal line. Has a crease and is dragged down near the 29 yard line. So the Cardinal down by three, trying to get the running game going. It's produced just 49 rushing yards so far. This is Love. And he just cannot get going. He's one of the best guys in the country yards after contact, but he's not been able to escape tackles tonight. No, and, and you can sit here and talk about his ankle, or you can also talk about the job that Notre Dame's doing as a defense. Their linebackers have been active. They're really coming downhill in a hurry. In a hurry. Tavon Coney, number four. Niles Morgan, five. Both of them on that last tackle. These guys are getting down, especially on first and ten. If you're Stanford, play action on first and ten. Get those linebackers out of position. We'll be coming up later in this third and fourth quarter. Second and eight, Castello pump fakes and delivers complete. Catch is made there across the 41st down yardage by Colby Parkinson. Pretty good effort here. Watch Costello. I thought it was a screen. He's setting up a screen, but watch the pump fake to Love. Like, uh, he thought he might want to go, but he recognized that it was taken away by Julian Love. So instead, he holds on to the ball, and then he sees his tight end Parkinson behind the screen. Nobody downfield, and they get a first down. Ugly, wobbly oh. pass. <laughs> he, he throws the ball from all different arm angles. He sure he's a baseball player, so he's, he's out there at shortstop and third base, like turning the double play. Not classical, but he gets the job done. Now Love speeds free. Love in the open field finally. Needs a downfield block. And is going to be knocked down inside the 30 by Julian Love. But Bryce makes his first big play tonight. Look at all those Notre Dame jerseys up front. This time, the linebacker's there. Perfectly, boom, right there. He's been there all night. Niles Morgan has been there all night to make that play. And that time, Love gives you the spin move to get around him. This is what he's been doing all year. Chris talked about how many yards he gets after contact. It's because of moves like that in a small area that he makes you makes you miss. And that time, the linebacker's free to make the play. Been making him most of the night. That time, unable to. 31-yard gain, and now he's spelled by Spates. Excuse me, Scarlett is in the game. And he's got the football. And he's stopped right at the line. Both, both Adams and Lovekirk, it doesn't matter how many times you tackle them for no gain or a short gain, they are always capable of getting out and changing the game. And that's why I think both sides with play calling, Mike Bloomgren over here for Stanford, they're always very cognizant of being patient because you just never know. It might be a gain of one, a gain of two, a gain of one, a gain of two, and you just never know when he might be able to hit a big one, and that's why they continue to go back to him. What a difference when he checks out and they bring in Scarlett or Spates. It's just a completely different feel from the potential the as far as the explosive ability from that running back spot. And the play action doesn't have the same impact either. Here's a play action look, but the Irish do not back off and Dalton Schultz, the tight end, is stop for a short game. I've really enjoyed watching K.J. Costello make his checks to the line of scrimmage, very reminiscent of Andrew Luck when he was at Stanford, or Kevin Hogan, and then watching the linebackers. They almost wait to hear, and then they right away go into their check, and it's, Notre Dame seems very confident. I don't know if they're, they picked up their, their adjustments or their audibles, but they're right away making adjustments. That's a lot back of verbiage to pick up. It is. If you can do that as a defender. You're... It's a little cat and mouse game going on between both sides. It continues here in this third and six. Spates in the game. He picks up the blitz. Costello hit as he throws. It's a wobbly duck for the end zone. It will fall harmlessly incomplete, but an interference. Our Sega right side defended by Troy Pride. Costello got hammered on the left side as he got rid of the ball. But this is going to be costly against Notre Dame. It's going to move the sticks here. Yeah, Tre Trevor Spates, the running back, that's in. That's interference. Defense number 18. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Here's the, here's the penalty. Is our yeah. Sega White side try to fight back to the ball? Yeah, well, they're both looking for the football, but I think Pride right there just pulling him down. That's, that's why the, the call is made. Watch the back here. Boom, he picks up one of them, but Elliott gets in free. So now Morgan gets picked up by Trevor Spates with two of them coming. He left Elliott free, and that's who hit him right as he threw the ball. So set up at first and goal. Love back in the game behind Marks. And six offensive linemen. Love. 
spins but cannot escape. No game. They continue to try to test the middle. Jonathan Bonner. Ten guys at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I, I know you're big and strong, and they've got ogres, and they've got tight ends, and they've got all these guys. Look at all those jerseys. Look, where, where are you going to run? And, and by the way, Tillery and those guys up front, I mean, look at all the free linebackers. You saw Drew, Drew uh, Tranquil gets in free. Greer Martini gets in free. This is their kind of game. Notre Dame linebackers are all oh, they love this. Support, downhill guys. Now they spread them out. Now with the three wide receiver look. Well, Sega Whiteside is to the right. You look that direction, lob it up. Big fella goes up and incomplete. Defended by Love that time. No flag. Third down. A little bit physical. Hand check both ways. But it's a very different look to me this time from Love compared to what we saw from Pride. Chris is up here. He's upset. He, every upset. week he, you know, he gets upset with the DBs pushing <laughs> on the receivers. To me, I, I got Davey Kataya up here. Dave, that looked like a clean call to me. I have no, I'm have no. i an offensive guy, I and I don't have a problem at all with that. Dog in the hunt. I just like the wrestling on the edge. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind. <laughs> You're going to put the ball up in the air like that. you got to let him fight That's for right it. Right on the other side. Same thing, other direction. Jump ball incomplete as Parkinson was well defended by Nick Watkins. It's fourth down. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I love that they went He's to the... He's not okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> and they go to the big guy here. Again, 6-7. And he has the ball. He has the ball. Just unable to bring it down right in his fingers. Oh, He's man. a red zone weapon. He's got only nine catches this year, but four of them yep, are for touchdowns. And so Jet Toner, who redshirted a year ago, first-year kicker, has been very solid. Has an angle to deal with from 24 to tie the game. And he drives it up and through. So the Cardinal move it 64 yards in nine plays. We are dead even on the farm. And uh, Jared Stidham just continuing to master that offense with Gus Malzahn. Big win for Auburn. They head to Atlanta to take on the Georgia Bulldogs in a rematch from just a couple weeks ago. See who wins the SEC championship. Wimbush design run shows his strength and picks up seven. 44 yards as a runner for Wimbush. He's averaged five and a half per carry. The two big touchdown passes. I really like Brandon Wimbush as a quarterback in this offense and gets through this year, works on his mechanics, continues to grow with his confidence. Adams bursts for a first down. Okay. He's got a lot of work to do with mechanics. What, what is his upside as a passer? I, I, I've, again, I've seen him throw. You, you would be shocked to watch him throw. He can make every throw that you would ask him to make. And I just think that they need to grow in that area to be able to give them great balance. One thing that Miami taught them is you can't be one-dimensional and go on the road for 12 weeks and be able to win those kind of games. Teams are going to take away your strength, and you've got to have an answer. And I think that's where Notre Dame is still growing from where, they, where they've been and where they're trying to go with Wimbush. Adams. Small crease. You know, Wimbush was pulled in Miami. Then Ian Book came in through the interception. So Wimbush went back in. Got off to a very slow start against Navy last week. Finally yeah. got it going in the second half. He did. This, this, this is the kind of game. And it's 17 17. We're at nine minutes to go in the third quarter. And what I love is both these teams, it's Josh Adams checking himself out, holding his hand. Both these teams want to impose their will on each other. It's going to be an interesting second half. Tony Jones hit behind the line, spins short of the first down. Mustafa Branch stopped him. Keep an eye on Adams in his situation. Right, he was holding his hand as he trotted off after that last carry. <laughs> first down. All right. Do you say so? These are Pac-12 officials, but Notre Dame gets the restraw. Still can't home, believe it. It's a home game for Dave, and he's... Dexter Williams in the pistol. Takes the football and breaks free. Williams bangs down inside the 40. That's his best run of the night. Great block by the left guard, Quentin Nelson. Watch him. Kicks out. He got the right guard pulling around bars. Just a well-executed play. Kick out right there. Follow the big guard, the right guard bars. And all of a sudden, he slips through there with speed. Adams in the game. It's Stefferson on the jet sweep behind some blockers. Stefferson 
Gets back the penalty yardage back inside the 20. That play stretched out nicely. And instead of getting out around Casey Tuhill, he stretched him out and then cut back underneath, so showing some just some natural running skills as a ball carrier. Adams back in the ball game. He's got it. The middle is clogged, and he has to fight, but will lose a yard. No room to run as Jobin Swan, who's now stepping in for the injured Cotton, made the play. Yeah, watch this penetration, how physical they are at the point of attack. He comes down, blows that play up. Alex Barr is the right guard, could not handle that, that, that speed that Casey Tuhill played with, and it blew up the play completely. There's nowhere for the left guard, Nelson, to pull around because he ran into the back of his right guard. Talked about that battle. Oh, horrible Harry. Harrison Phillips in the middle there. He won that battle against the Irish interior line. Third and 11. Wimbush. Design run. Loss. Horrible Harry ate him up. And the Irish don't do anything with the great field position. Here comes the field goal no, team. They really, those first two plays got to drive Brian Kelly crazy. Harrison, Phil or Harrison Phillips is right in the middle of that defense. They tried to use a formation with three receivers to clear out the linebackers and open it up for the middle for Wimbush to run. But Stanford's ready for that and takes that away. Justin Yu has been perfect this year inside of 40 yards. This from 38. For the lead. And if he missed it, I wasn't going to claim the, the announcer jinx, but he stays perfect <laughs> inside 40. And Notre Dame uses the big fake punt return to set up a short drive. Not what they were looking for, but they reclaim the lead at 20 to 17. About 16 and a half minutes to play in this one. This is what you expect to see. Notre Dame and Stanford. Brian Kelly said it'll probably come down to the last possession. And it looks like it's going to. How about 20 to 17? Game that's going to go back and forth. You see the numbers. Stanford on third down. Let's keep an eye on that into this third, the latter part of the third into the fourth quarter. They're going to get in a little bit more of a manageable situation. But I think the quarterback play, as much as you want to see the physicality and the running game and which running back, it's going to be the quarterback play that ultimately is going to decide this. Somebody's going to have to make some big throws here late in this game. Interesting. You see, got Castello, who has taken over as the starter. Three of his five career starts have been against ranked opponents. He's been in against some tough people, and of course, Wimbush has had some troubles against tough competition this year. Also had some great moments. This is Scarlett from the three. And he runs through a couple tackles out near the 30. Love 65 yards tonight. They don't beat it to him. They make a low throw, and it's the first catch tonight for Donald Stewart. A sophomore from New Jersey. Costello, Chris showed a little patience here because he had to negotiate where Greer Martini was. Used his eyes to get him out of the way and then ended up throwing the ball right behind him. Final minute of the quarter. Love. Cuts it back. Rice Love. Hurdles ahead, ankle holding up so far. There's another first down in Notre Dame territory. Here comes a flag after the play. Helmet ripped off Love's head there. I didn't see how that happened. Well, I think Julian Love got his hands on it. I don't think it was necessarily intentional, but he did get the face mask and pulled off. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 27. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. There's no love number between the two guys named Love. Yeah, exactly. Lo love 27 being blocked there by Irwin, just kind of reaching and in super slow mo. It looks like he, he got a hold of it and pulled it, but in, in, in re regular speed, you could tell he didn't intentionally mean to be able to get his hands into that face mask, but nonetheless, still 15 yards. Love didn't have to come out because it was pulled off him, but they got to fix the helmet. So he is not in the game as the ball has moved to the Irish 31. Scarlett is the back. Costello, pump fake, steps up, delivers a downfield throw over the head of Irwin and had his man beat. Boy, did he have him beat. Nick Watkins.
bit on this completely little move slant and go bit on it trying to jump the route they caught him at the right time just unable to connect with the accuracy Costello would love to have that one back that's one of those you wait for you wait for you bait him and you hope this is the time and we call it and we miss it Jay Tyler a small receiver in this group he checks into the game love up the middle Shows that burst, and it's another first down at the Notre Dame 20. Well, these linemen are so much fun to watch. Left side pulling around with Bright and Hamilton, the big center, the leader up front, Jesse Burkett. Just moving people around. Clock will wind down. We are headed to the final quarter at Stanford. The Irish and the Cardinal in a close game. What else? Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. The Irish in front, but the Cardinals threatening as we begin the final quarter. Battle for the Legends Trophy. Irish Crystal sitting on top of base of California Redwood. Cardinals have moved it 49 yards in this drive. And Bryce Love, 89 yards on 16 carries so far, and the tail back in the eye. Behind six offensive linemen, he cuts it right, stutter steps, and he earns about three. You know, Notre Dame has been doing this same scheme all night long, and it's been very effective. The difference is, I think the Stanford offensive line is getting a little bit of footing. You see Bryce Love talking about footing hobbling off the field right now, which is something he's been doing throughout the whole game. He'll play for a couple plays, and he has to come out. But I think the line's doing a better job of against that eight- and nine-man look up front. Spates. Wow. He's chased down by Niles Morgan. It looks to be okay. He was helped off a little while ago, made a play there. We just talked about how they're doing a good job, but you cannot deal with this. Watch this, <laughs> how quickly you're trying to be a lineman. He sees that so quickly. At the left tackle, Devery Hamilton had no chance to try to climb up there to get him. Out of the starting block. Oh, just sprinted. Great reaction there. And they back out and rush four. Costello harassed. Steps up. Delivers to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Caden Smith. Roommate to roommate. And Stanford reclaims the lead. some great quarterbacks have played here this is a big time throw watch him get pressure from Okwara shakes it off steps in the pocket and throws an absolute dime to his roommate Caden Smith how about the pressure and he sh as he shakes him he steps up knows he's running out of time because Smith's about to run out of the back of the end zone so throws it right over his shoulder that's as good as you can do by KJ Costello Making his fifth career start. Big time arm talent, as they say. That wasn't, again, a classical delivery. Kind of swung it three quarters, Kirk, but as you said, dropped a dime in there. So, the Stanford Cardinal back in front as the tight end makes a nice catch and a beautiful throw. Stanford man needs very little to, to enjoy themselves, but they, they are partying right now at the moment after this pretty 19-yard touchdown. That, that was one of the best throws, considering it was third and eight, 20 to 17. KJ, J, KJ Costello growing up right in front of us, young sophomore. And he goes out and body slams his, his buddy, the tight end, who made the catch there. No doubt. Costello with three touchdown passes, no interceptions tonight. Turned over a free game so far. Sanders from one yard deep will take a knee. Now can Wimbush and the Irish offense answer? Tony Jones is the back. They fake it to him. Wimbush from the pocket delivers. Intercepted. The first turnover of the night. And it's returned by Curtis Robinson, a backup linebacker. A disastrous play from Wimbush. Uh, he, he predetermined where he wanted to go with the football to Durham Smythe. And he got fooled. 
zone pressure. Here's the man who intercepts it. He shows him pressure, and then he drops into the flat. Tight end ends up going for the, the out for the ball, but CLA doesn't even recognize the potential threat of Curtis Robinson in coverage. Wimbush comes off. He's staring right at his target, Smythe. Makes it easy for Robinson to drop. I don't think he ever saw him because he was up at the line of scrimmage at the snap of the ball. He's thinking that he's going to rush. Instead, he fakes rush and drops into the flat. Fools Wimbush comes up with the interception. And he says it all, doesn't it, from the Notre Dame perspective. Stanford now threatening to make this a two-score game. Can Notre Dame hold into a field goal attempt here? Wimbush, remember, had that long streak going into the Miami game without an interception? He's had some troubles in the last few games. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage at the bottom in a good matchup against Nick Watkins. Love motions into the slot on the left now. And they give it to him on the end around. Bryce Love breaking free. Look out. Love knocked down at the 15. A little wrinkle there from Mike Lundgren. And you get him out in open field, not to mention he's got linemen to be able to pull around to get out in front. But when he gets right here, the cutback is definitely something you've got to be concerned about. Tries to get outside, they take that away. And now because people are trying so hard to get outside, not to let him get out there, he senses that. And that's the vision that he has, and that's when he cuts back. No home runs tonight for Love, but a 14-yard gain, and he's over 100, 107. This is Scarlett spelling him down near the 12-yard line. Talk about a big sequence of plays coming up for both teams. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a chance to go up by 11, a couple scores for Stanford. Notre Dame's thinking about, hey, red zone defense. Got to stop it. Got to force the field goal here. They just mentioned before that it was a turnover-free game. You wondered when the first real mistake of the night by an offense might come into play. The big tight end at the bottom, Colby Parkinson at 6'7". They fake it to Scarlett. Costello backpedals, looks that way, lobs it up, caught, touchdown by Dalton Schultz, the other tight end. Schultz, one of the senior captains, more of a blocker, but does come up with his third touchdown catch, and it is a double-digit Stanford lead. For well, the big tight end, right here works to the post and look at this Schultz is between these two big linemen gets caught up and then works his way underneath you can see Parkinson Parkinson's waving his hand to say hey throw it to me to try to get the defense's attention Notre Dame fooled and just like that Stanford up 11. Toner adds the conversion. Four touchdown passes to four different receivers. That's a career high in the brief career of Costello, all set up by the first turnover of the night as they cash in Robinson's pick into seven. Lead is 11. An electric start to the fourth quarter for the Cardinal, who trailed by three after three, but two touchdowns in the last minute 25. And they are up to 11 in a serious test for Brandon Wimbush, who after throwing the interception at the sidelines briefly visited the athletic trainer's tent. Seems to be okay. Bailey's boots to the end zone. And he'll bring it out. Sanders lost the ball. Another turnover, and Stanford comes up with it. And the wheels have come off the Irish. Chris, I think it was Jordan Fox who came down there and made a hit, number 10. Initially hit by Simmons, and that hit right there by Fox. The ball is definitely out before his knee touches. Leak Antoine will recover it, Kurt. Yep, all over it. And another huge opportunity for Stanford inside the 20-yard line. You know, there's been a pitch invasion as they say a, a moron has uh, decided to run out on the field and he's now making his way toward the Stanford team and see if he's going to be intercepted no nope, he's running he's running okay well, let's get back to football here it's Costello and the Cardinal trying to cash in back-to-back -back turnovers from the Irish here
Love he was in the game. Still making those pre snap adjustments, directing traffic. You're right, that's fun to watch. It is. From the pocket. He cannot escape. He will be dropped for a short loss. Uh, the sack there, the second for Notre Dame. Jonathan Bonner got him. Again, I, I, I'm one of these guys that's thinking about if I'm on Notre Dame's team. Yeah, right now, this doesn't look good. You're down 11. You've given up a couple quick scores when it was a really a close game. You had the lead, and now you're down 11. You stop him here. Yeah. You got to stop him here. It's still a two touchdown game. You give up a touchdown, and now you're talking about a very, very difficult uh, lead to be able yeah, to come right. back. The 14 from. or 18 point difference is massive. Yeah. Yes. This is big. Love. Shows that drive, gritting his teeth, playing through pain yet again tonight. It's, it's, it's the combination of his vision. In this offense, he hides behind those big linemen. He accelerates so quickly upfield. And the other thing is, despite that high ankle sprain that he's been playing with for six weeks, he's really physical. I mean, he's hard to bring down. Low center gravity kind of guy. And you know what? He's not thinking about the short week. No. The chance to play SC in five. No, no, He's no. still in there battling tonight, as, as you suggested he would. Third and five. Big play. Love. Makes the first down. Stiff arm. Battles down inside the five. Sheer toughness on display tonight for the number 20. Are you kidding me? 5'10", 196 pounds. Gets right up and gives a little stiff arm to, to the safety. Gives another stiff arm to Nick Watkins. Shakes a couple tackles. How about that stiff arm to Nick Watkins? Every every large body in the world has now run onto the field. Love has, has limped off again. But first and go, what, what do you see what, what Shaw has sent in here? The big fellas here. <laughs> They call this, it doesn't fit, but they, they call this kind of the thug grouping. Scarlet is in the back of all that humanity. He crouched down, spring up on the snap, and hammer to the end zone. And the Cardinals stretch the lead, cash in another turnover. Pure muscle. Well, as much as Notre Dame likes to lean on you for 60 minutes, it's exactly what Stanford likes to do. Intellectual brutality is what they call that for 60 minutes. And eventually it wears you down. Third touchdown in the first five minutes of the final quarter. And Stanford has blown this thing wide open. You wonder, you know, how Wimbush was going to answer. Never got the chance because C.J. Sanders hammered on the return. The fumble forced and recovered. The fumble gives Notre Dame an opportunity, or gives Stanford an opportunity. And how about big Nick Wilson, 54, leading the way. Touchdown, Cardinal. Wow. Cardinal with three fourth quarter touchdowns to blast this wide open pair of Notre Dame turnovers setting up two quick scores and the Irish in serious trouble down 18. Did he erase whatever faint college football playoff hopes Notre Dame has denying the chance for the 10 win season regular season. <laughs> There's Notre Dame's physical runner Adams who's been really contained tonight. You got to show serious urgency for yeah, sure at this point. It's a totally different mindset in how they prefer to play for Brian Kelly. I mean, this is a team that wants to run the ball. Adams picks his way. It'll be third down and four. Now he said that his team wasn't ready for their, their road test at Miami. He took some responsibility. He didn't didn't manage the Keens intensity and the hostility of the crowd. Not the case tonight. Totally different environment. They handled it well for three quarters. Uh, just like that, the blink of an eye, this game went from being 20 to 14 to 38 to 20. Wimbush on third down, cannot escape, will lose a yard. It'll be fourth and five, and he stays on the ground. He 
is forced to step up inside the pocket here. Good, good job of mixing up their looks. Alan Bailly is 34 who forced him up into that pocket. Teammates had to help him up, Kirk, and he is really struggling. Ian Book is the backup. He throws the ball very well. They may have to, yeah. may have to go to him. Look, like he's favoring that left leg. And he was in the tent. The, the previous possession when he threw the interception, he was in the tent after that, having something looked Watch at. It. It. Ooh, yeah, he, yep. That knee. Hit by his lineman. Yeah, his own, his own lineman. Looks like Mustafer, the center. When your battery made you, you're having a hard enough time with the Sanford defense without the center kicking you in the knee. And the punt coming up. And this is not the team you want to be behind 18 to in the fourth quarter when they could just lean on you and just grind out the clock. They scored three touchdowns in his fourth quarter thanks to two turnovers from Notre Dame. So they're going to go for it here. Book is in the game. Desperation time for Notre Dame from their own 30. Five yards to keep faint hope alive. Book tries to escape. He will run for the first down, diving out across the 40. Not bad for coming in stone cold. Uh, really good job. They cleared it out with a little bit of motion by the tight end, Wisher, who took a linebacker with him, Perez, and then the route actually out of the backfield by Josh Adams to another linebacker. Nobody's home. That's right. Wimbush checks back into the game. Wimbush knocked down in the pocket. Boy, just shoving a man back into the quarterback was number 33, Mike Tyler, the linebacker. Yeah, he's finally getting some reps here as a linebacker and a pass rush specialist. He just put, I mean, it, this is, think about now, going up against one of the best left tackles in college football. McGlinchey does the splits there. some flexibility, big fella. <laughs> he the splits. Wimbush escapes. And he's going to be knocked down. Gets some of the yardage back to the 45. McGlinchey kind of limping around now, trying to stretch out his, looks like his right leg. I understand why. I know if the big tackles are built for the splits. On third down, Wimbush stands and delivers a nice throw downfield. And the catch is made, knocked out of bounds. Miles Boykin getting involved, first catch tonight. Yep, 6'4", 225 pounds. Known for his ability to fight for the football, especially down in that red zone when given a chance. He comes up a little bit gingerly himself. Still trying to run personnel on and off the field. Throws it to St. Brown. It's incomplete. Looks like Stanford's going to protect home turf. Finish undefeated at home. Continue their mastery of the Fighting Irish on this field. And the Notre Dame is their revenge tour is going to fall one step short. They were able to beat Michigan State and NC State and USC and Navy teams that beat them a year ago. Stanford was the last opponent that was part of that 4 8 debacle. Not able to pay back the Cardinal. Wimbush. Loads up and delivers, and then Stefferson makes the catch. Still running, retreating a bit, and will be dragged down at the 18-yard line. Where it gets messy is if TCU beats Oklahoma or Ohio State and or Ohio State knocks off Wisconsin. Bear tells me that he thinks Wisconsin, Ohio State will be favored against Wisconsin. JT Barrett's status, not the knee injury involving a cameraman there pre-game, according to Barrett. Wimbush fire is incomplete. Urban Meyer is a cameraman out there that Urban Meyer is looking for. Yeah, I noticed nobody raised their hand. No, man, he, he brought it forward. <laughs> brought cameraman, I, I know nothing. I see nothing, I know nothing. Askins did a nice job. We've seen him practice, so we know the skill set. He's been involved in some games, but to step in there that was for Ohio State. They were know, in emergency relief and outplay a 23-year-old of they, horn big they were time. were down yeah. when he came into the game. Irish trying for a, a consolation touchdown here. What's been a disastrous fourth quarter. Wimbush for the end zone. High ball. In, no, Claypool on his back came up with it. Touchdown. A circus catch. Juggled in the air to just sort of landed on the receiver for six. 
point. Antoine looked like he knocked that ball away. It's caught, and then look, he gets his hands on it, goes up in the air, because he fought for that football, and then it, you said it just, lands, it just lands on his chest. At least, did he? Now, did he Did he have full control of the ball before yeah. his shoulders roll back and head out of bounds? That's the, we might have to get Dave Kataya for an 11th hour review here, because uh, he hasn't been busy enough tonight. Doesn't have control yet. Oh, and his body. The receiver touched out of bounds before gaining control of the pass. The pass is incomplete. Third down. So the lead returns to 18 points. Chuck's got good form tonight, hasn't he? The head official. Chris Coit is the referee, or are you talking about Chuck? Chuck's in the replay booth. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Chris doing a good job tonight, leading the team. He's one of the younger officials, hasn't been a referee that long. Getting a high profile assignment tonight. So Wimbush. And has thrown a couple of touchdowns. Doesn't get that one there. Go with his two interceptions. On third and ten. Wimbush escaping, slipping, still fighting, and now it's going to be a hit. <laughs> Finally, Justin Reed said, enough's enough of this dancing around. I'm just going to knock you out of bounds. <laughs> Yeah, Bunkham held him up, and Justin Reed said, I, I've seen enough of this. By the way, Bunkham, who had the pick, you said he's a smart guy. He's an aspiring brain surgeon. So a lot of what we say, you know, it isn't brain surgery, but he, he's studying to be a brain surgeon. There's so many impressive guys throughout really both rosters, but spend time with these Stanford dudes, and there's a bunch of aspiring doctors on this football field. Yeah. Fourth and 13. Wimbush delivers incomplete was thrown behind Stefferson in the five yard line and the Cardinal will take over with the minute 49 to grind out a victory here. Impressive win here for Stanford 38 to 20 over number eight Notre Dame Pac-12 championship game. Nobody knew as this game started whether or not they have an opportunity to play next week against USC. I'm sure they found out scores have been talked about Washington ends up winning Washington State gets knocked off and you and I have been around David Shaw a long time kind of took the baton from Jim Harbaugh and has taken this program to an even different level the consistency is remarkable what he's been able to build here if you're a Stanford fan you have so much to be proud of not only with the results on the field but the way they get it done the way that's he that, carries it perfectly said I couldn't add anything to that except that Shaw did and this is meaningful for him to become the all-time Stanford leader in coaching victories he surpassed the great pop Warner in the last couple of weeks adds one on and he's going to up his personal record to 13 and 0 at home against non-conference teams and Stanford's going to make it six in a row here against AP top 10 team you come into this place and it may not be the loudest the most imposing place but it's a tough place for even a high quality team to come in and win and, and like a lot of coaches that, that win consistently he has found a model in recruiting that works for him offensive linemen quarterbacks tight ends running backs wide receivers linebackers defensive linemen safeties he, he knows how to recruit to his system, and it works. And it's a lot of fun to watch. Very different from everything you watch all Saturday. Love with a smile on his face, standing up. And we certainly hope he can be himself. He'll grit his teeth one more time, and he'll try to hit back the Trojans there in the championship game. Give, give me a quick take on that game in Levi Stadium on Friday night. Yeah, I think it, Stanford after tonight... You and I had USC last week. I cannot wait to watch Costello and how he played tonight and how he plays next week. We should mention Notre Dame, four and eight last year. I know they're disappointed with this loss, but a heck of a turnaround for Brian Kelly and the Irish after where they were last year. Damaging loss for their year six bowl hopes. No drama. Kelly had a heated exchange with a Stanford strength coach in this situation a year ago in South Bend. Much more cordial tonight, thankfully. Harrison Phillips, one of those seniors on this team. Maria Taylor standing by with Coach Shaw. 
Thanks, Chris. Well, Coach, you wondered which Stanford team would show up for this game. What impressed you most with this win over the eighth best team in the nation? Well, you know, this was Thanksgiving week. We talked about what we're thankful for, and I lead the blessing uh, on that day, and I talked about being thankful for the things that we have and things that we don't have which means we, we had a rough road uh, early in the year after game three. Everyone shoveled dirt on us. We were done. As I said earlier, it wasn't like our bandwagon was empty. There was no bandwagon. And we came back and went eight out of nine. Eight out of nine, toughness, heart. We had guys go down. We got guys get injured. We changed the quarterback. Left tackle gets hurt. Bryce Love twists an ankle. And the guys just keep fighting and play with a lot of heart, and I, and I, and I love them. And now the Washington-Washington State game has gone to double zeros. The Huskies get the win, so you're going back to the Pac-12 championship for the first time since 2015. What does it mean to have that for this team? Well, so what happened so much, and, and, and God bless you all in the business that you're in, um, we all try to guess what's going to happen, right? This person's going to win this trophy. This team's going to go to the playoffs. This team's going to go to the championship. These are 18 to 22 year old kids. You have to play the games. You have to play the games and our guys kept fighting. We earned our way back to the championship game. We got to find a way to rest and also prepare for a very good USC team. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Very little time to rest. That Friday night game is an interesting element to this, especially since the other side's gonna have a bye week. Costello and love, getting love from David Shaw. As the Cardinal gather in the corner and send off another season undefeated at home this year. The next game was produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley. Thanks to our crew for working so hard on Thanksgiving week. We'll see you from Charlotte, the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game, Hudson and Miami in this time slot next week. The Fort Wrap-Up Show to Cassidy Hubbard.